Trump found guilty in hush money trial. World's largest ever cybercrime botnet arrested. North Korea sends balloons filled with waste into the South. Major change in South Africa election after 30 years. Iceland volcano erupted for the fifth time since December. John Lennon's lost guitar sold for record $2.8 million. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It is Friday, May 31st, and here are your top stories. A Manhattan jury found Donald Trump guilty of all 34 charges of falsifying business record Thursday, an unprecedented and historic verdict that made Trump the first former president in American history to be convicted of a felony. Not only is Trump the first former president to be found guilty of a felony, he's also the first major party presidential nominee to be convicted of a crime in the midst of a campaign for the White House. And if he defeats President Joe Biden in November, he will be the first sitting president in history to be convicted felon. The verdict in the hush money trial was announced after jurors deliberated for nearly 12 hours over two days. It will ultimately be up to voters in November to decide the significance of the guilty verdict delivered by 12 ordinary New Yorkers, which, on a legal basis, does not prevent him from being elected president again. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. The real verdict is going to be November 5th, by the people, and they know what happened here and everybody knows what happened here," Trump said after leaving the courtroom, slamming the presiding judge and the prosecutor who brought the case. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, a Democrat, announced charges against Trump last year and presenting the first indictment of a former president, accusing him of falsifying the repayment of his former lawyer Michael Cohen in order to cover up a $130,000 payment Cohen made to adult film star Stormy Daniels to keep her from speaking out about an alleged affair with Trump before the 2016 election. An international law enforcement team has arrested a Chinese national and disrupted a major botnet that officials said he ran for nearly a decade, amassing at least $99 million in profit by reselling access to criminals who use it for identity theft, child exploitation, and financial fraud, including pandemic relief scams. The U.S. Department of Justice quoted FBI Director Christopher Wray as saying Wednesday that the 9-11 S5 botnet, a network of malware-infected computers in nearly 200 countries, was likely the world's largest. Justice said in a news release that Yu He Wang, 35, was arrested May 24th. Wang was arrested in Singapore, and search warrants were executed there and in Thailand. The FBI's Deputy Assistant Director for Cyber Operations, Brett Leatherman, said in a LinkedIn post. Authorities also seized $29 million in cryptocurrency, Leatherman said. Cyber criminals used Wang's network of zombie residential computers to steal billions of dollars from financial institutions, credit card issuers and account holders, and federal lending programs since 2014, according to an indictment filed in Texas's Eastern District. Criminals who purchased access to the zombie network from Wang were responsible for more than $5.9 billion in estimated losses due to fraud against relief programs. Officials estimated 560,000 fraudulent unemployment insurance claims originated from compromised IP addresses. Wang allegedly managed the botnet through 150 dedicated servers, half of them leased from U.S.-based online service providers. Waste and propaganda are raining down across the Korea Peninsula. It's not the cross-border barrage South Koreans have been fearing. The country's military said Wednesday that its nuclear-armed neighbor launched more than 200 balloons across the border overnight, carrying trash, bottles, old batteries, leaflets, fertilizers, and other waste. The balloons were found primarily in the border province of Gyeonggi and Gyeongwon, but they were also seen hundreds of miles south in South Gyeongsan. South Korea sent out a government emergency disaster alert, urging people to refrain from touching the objects and to report any more incidents to the military. Response teams were dispatched to identify what exactly was in the balloons, which confirmed fertilizers. South Korea's defense ministry told NBC News that no human waste was found but said North Korea did send human waste via balloon in 2016. North Korea often uses human feces as fertilizer. Photographs released by the South Korean military showed inflated balloons anchored with plastic bags full with garbage. The barrage follows a warning from North Korea's vice defense minister about a tit-for-tat action after South Korean activists sent anti-Pyongyang leaflets over the border recently.
Early this month, North Korean defector turned human rights activist Park Sang Hak sent 20 balloons carrying 300,000 leaflets condemning North Korean leader Kim Jong un. <laughs> Very early counts in South Africa's national election put the long-ruling African National Congress at just over 42 percent of the vote, raising the possibility that it might lose its majority for the first time since it swept to power under Nelson Mandela at the end of apartheid in 1994. With only just over 16 percent of votes counted and declared, it was only a partial picture after Wednesday's election. The final results of a vote that could bring the biggest political shift in South Africa's young democracy were expected to take days, with the Independent Electoral Commission saying they would be delivered by Sunday. South Africans were set to wait with bated breath to see if their country, Africa's most advanced economy, was about to see momentous change. The Electoral Commission was projecting a 70% voter turnout in this election, up from the 66% in the last national election in 2019. The ANC won 57.5 percent of the vote in that last election, its worst performance to date. This election was seen as a direct referendum on the unbroken three-decade rule of the ANC, which freed South Africa from the oppressive, racist apartheid regime in the famous all-race vote of 1994 but has seen a steady decrease in its popularity over the last 20 years. This year could be the tipping point when most South Africans turn away from the ANC and deny it a majority for the first time. A volcano in southwestern Iceland erupted Wednesday for the fifth time since December, spewing massive lava flow that threatened to cut off the town of Grindavik and prompting the evacuation of the world-famous Blue Lagoon. Dramatic video and images from the scene showed fountains of red-hot lava shooting into the air along a 3.4-kilometer frizzer near Mount Hagafell on the Reykjavik's peninsula. Iceland's meteorological office said in a statement that the first estimate of scientists is that the start of this eruption is more vigorous than in previous eruptions in the area. The eruption began around 1 p.m. local time on Wednesday following an earthquake at the Sundnux crater, Iceland's public broadcaster RUV reported. The Met Office had earlier warned that a volcanic eruption was likely following intense seismic activity at the crater and a buildup of magma in its underground reservoir. Lava flowshave cut off two out of three roads leading to the fishing town of Grindavik and were steadily moving along a defensive barrier built to save the town and key infrastructure from being destroyed, according to the Met Office. Grindavik, a town of about 3,000 people, was mostly evacuated before a previous eruption in December. Residents and responders who remain in the town have been urged to leave while they still can, though police told RUV that three residents are refusing to evacuate. A lost guitar played by John Lennon and height of Beatles that had been stashed away in an attic for decades has been sold at an auction for more than $2.8 million. The sale makes it the most expensive item belonging to the former Beatle and one of the most expensive guitars of all time. The 1964 12-string Framus Hootenanny guitar, played by both Lennon and George Harrison during the making of Help and Rubber Soul in 1965, was considered missing for 50 years. But it re-emerged and was sold at New York's Hard Rock Cafe on Wednesday for $2,857,500, Julian Auction said in a statement. A Gibson acoustic guitar also once owned by Lennon wassailed at auction for $2.4 million in 2015. Lennon can be seen playing the Framus guitar in the movie, Help, and it has been matched to photos from recording sessions and handwritten notes by producer George Martin, the auctioneer said. The German-made guitar features prominently on songs including You've Got to Hide Your Love Away, an example of the Beatles moving towards the folk rock popularized by Bob Dylan and lyrics with more storytelling qualities. It also lends a big, round acoustic sound to Help, I've Just Seen a Face, and Norwegian Wood. Beatles gear expert, musician and author Andy Babiak helped confirm that the guitar is genuine, thanks to some original markings, including the tortoise shell of the pickguard. The answer for yesterday is A. Mounted. The diamond is mounted in gold. 
Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of John Lennon's lost guitar sold for record $2.8 million. Number one, stash. She has a fortune stashed away in various bank accounts. Number two, prominent. He played a prominent part in the campaign. Number three, acoustic. The concert was recorded in a church that is famous for its acoustics. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comments section, and the correct answer will be announced next Monday. And that's it for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune into Funday News from Monday to Friday, and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Wade Lee, your host. I'll see you next time.